So if it looks like I've gone back to the 1990s with this desktop, that pretty much is because we've gone back to 1993 with the common desktop environment, which they use the acronym CDE. So it started out life as a proprietary software built as a combined effort between HP, Sunsoft, IBM, and Unix system laboratories. Now, those of you who know your history, that's 1993, it was very much in the early days of the Linux kernel. So it was not built primarily as a Linux desktop, more for a Unix desktop. And 1993 would have, well, predated Windows 95, but would have post-dated Windows 3.1. So it's this early era of desktop styling, predating the start bar. So where do they really go with the styling of the desktop? And this is kind of what we're getting. So CDE remained as proprietary software up until 2012. So in 2006, there was a petition to make CDE open source. And it didn't seem to be happening, so there was actually efforts to remake CDE into a project called Open CDE, which would have been open source. And finally, in 2012, the project was released as free open source, so Open CDE became deprecated. So as free open source software, it's been ported to other Linux desktop systems and been packaged up for them. So I'm using it here in Debian. Well, to be precise, I'm using it in Sparky Linux, which is based on Debian. So you can get CDE for Fedora, Arch, Debian, and OpenBSD. Not Ubuntu particularly easily. So let's take more of a look at it. So we'll start looking at the memory usage, and uh, no surprises here, it is quite low. Although 113 meg, thinking back to the early 90s, that would have um, pretty well filled up the memory. Actually, the early 90s, that would have overflowed it entirely. It wasn't until the late 90s that that would have been reasonable. So I'm expecting that a lot of that is the actual base operating system itself rather than the desktop. So we have the option of maximizing, minimizing, and the minimized windows go up onto the desktop, restore, and we can close on the left hand side. So the close button is no ordinary close button. We can occupy workspace, occupy all workspaces, or lower it down. Yeah, oh, and we can move and resize it as well. So <laughs> how's that for a bit of a selection? Uh, of course, now I've just done that. How do I close it? Uh, let's try an exit. Alt F4 probably would have worked as well. So at the bottom of the screen, we have this panel with a few different items in it. So starting at left-hand side, we have a clock in analog form. Install icon or clock, yeah, can't do much there. A calendar. We're getting some error messages here. That's because the install didn't go cleanly. There are some dependencies missing in Debian. It's enough though that the system is usable. A very basic styled calendar. As a file manager. Text editor. And also there's a sub menu there for terminal and icon editor. A very basic editor here where each of those squares is one pixel. It's an email application, but it's not installed properly, so that doesn't work. We'll get help. Mailer has not properly installed. Yeah, thanks for that. Towards the center of this panel, we've got the desktop switcher and shutdown, or well, that's exit in this case. So desktop switcher, we've got a total of four desktops. Now, it seems to be impressive they've done multiple desktops back in the early 90s. Microsoft didn't implement that feature until, well, only just recently. Now you'll notice with the desktops here, this is a divid colouring. So it's not rendered particularly many colours. I think probably it's only rendered 256 colours. So it's trying try to do its best to look a bit nicer. Let's see, on the right hand side we have printers. Found no printers. Yeah, that's fair enough, I don't own a printer. Style manager. We'll come to this one a bit more in a moment. Moving across to the application manager. Now I'm aware that there's a way of getting more applications onto the desktop. I think it's using this application builder, but it doesn't work for me. So I think, again, a dependency is missing. So yeah, we're kind of locked in with the icons we have. So moving further across, we have this launcher for DT Info. Now this doesn't exist in Debian. I've looked all around the packages, not there. Arch appears to have it in there, but yeah, not Debian. And finally, we have a trash can, Ooh, recycle bin rubbish. So yeah, in terms of the selection of applications, yeah, that's all we're going to get. Not to say you can't launch anything else. VLC, there you go. And we could open a file and play a music video. And it's not just confined to VLC, we could run other applications. Firefox. 
And there's tab to also complete there as well. Shame I can't have it as an icon. Look at this help viewer. Oh, this, this seems to be quite something this did. And I have to click on this one, the desktop help system. Help for using the help. Oh yeah, gotta have that. And we've got instructions here on how to use hyperlinks. Funny, you don't really see that nowadays on a browser. Yes, click this underlined text. <laughs> man page viewer, so man page ls. The font rendering isn't particularly clear. Yeah. I expect that's more the font and the age of the system. Yeah, probably lacks uh, some decent rendering on the font. But yeah, again, that's sort of fair enough if you think back to the 90s. Let's look at this style manager. There's actually quite a selection of colours you can have here for the styling, but you have to log out and log back in to get them. Oh, can we modify it further as well? Yes, you can. RGB 255255255, so that's 16-bit colour. So if we can do 16-bit colour, why does the desktop look? go for the divid look? Grab colour? <laughs> Grab the colour off the screen? Come on, that's some useful features there. You've got font sizes here, and that seems to be a bit different numbering system than we use nowadays for fonts. I mean, if you took a Word document, you would be using something like size 12 font. Instead here, we're calling that size 4 font. Backdrop. <laughs> Let's have that one. Ooh, patterned wallpaper. Oh dear, let's get rid of that one. Let's just go for sky dark. Yeah. You'll notice the colour repeats at the bottom of the screen. Now I wonder if that's because the height limitation might be around 1024 pixels. Mine's 1080. Is that sort of distance? It could be that sort of distance. Mouse? Mouse acceleration? Beeping? Nah. Screensaver. Got a screensaver. No, I did have this. Oh yeah, here we are. Switch it on. So you can select multiple screensavers and it rotates through them over, after a number of minutes. I quite like that Wiggly Worms one. You can't test it though. It's the only button it's missing, you can't test. Window. A mm, few options there. And finally, start up. I tried this before, return to home screen, and it didn't seem to make any difference. I know that's a sort of similar feature like KD has. You can restore to your current session with your currently open applications. I think the final place we'll look at is in the file manager folder to open. You don't have to ask me that, you can just go to... Depends which link you click on. I think if you click on the one over here, it doesn't ask you. Who knows why that's like that? I don't. So this is the text editor. It's got no formatting for program. Why am I even asking for this feature? Come on, this was the 90s. At least with this font, it's like a mono site, so each character takes up the same space. So it makes programming a bit easier. The one weird thing is when you try and open a video, I'm not going to do it again, but if you try and open it here, you, it just goes straight into the text editor, which is a bit catastrophic when they're this size. And then because it locks in the session, you kind of get really stuck and you've got a massive text file and you can't close it easily. Didn't crash though, it carried on working. Can we do a different view? Yes, I think we can. Name, date and size. There you go. So what that would be, that would be, oh god, it's in bytes, isn't it? Uh, to 24 meg. Not too large. In fact, it kept a 24 meg text file open. So that was a look at CDE. A very ancient desktop. I can remind you of the past. As far as me using it as a modern system, I most certainly would not. Right, thanks for watching. See you all later.